All right, in this video, I'm gonna take you on a brief tour of all the outputs uh, for S6L and show you how to navigate them and actually do uh, engage the processing on them, etc. cetera. So um, here on the console, you can see I have the first outputs bank set up here. Uh, this is AUXs 1 through 32, but I, I actually thought it might be a little easier to show you all these different outputs just by simply building a user-defined layer uh, that's got them all available to the zoom view. Okay, so if I go to my layout, uh, you'll see that I have all the different output capabilities here. I have uh, a mono and a stereo aux, a mono and a stereo subgroup, mono and a stereo matrix, the left right master, and a VCA master. Okay, so we'll, we'll navigate and uh, get through all of those to show you how they all work. All right, so the first place we'll start with the outputs is, of course, with the attention key. This is probably the most important button on the entire console. So uh, if we go to the attention button, you'll notice uh, a single press of it will bring the external screen software to the attention of that output. Uh, if we have a flex channel in play, it'll also bring uh, that output to the flex channel uh, where we can lock it there if we want to do it, if we want to keep it there all the time. Uh, if we have the center touchscreen in channel mode, it will attention that output to there as well so you can see it in a kind of a zoomed in view, okay? Of course, we have the ability to attention channels from the universe view as well. Uh, for instance, if I'm in auxes, I can attention any channel or any output at any time there. Same for subgroups, matrices, I can attention, uh, VCAs, I can attention, even the main left, right, I can attention there as well, all right? So uh, the difference obviously between an output and an input with regard to the attention key is that a single press of an output attention will activate the external software. We'll be able to see that uh, in a zoomed in view in the external software. Whereas on the input side, it requires a double tap of that to bring it to the screen. Now we wouldn't want to, we can't do that uh, obviously in outputs because if we double tap, we'll initiate a spill of the membership of that output. So just a single tap will do it there. Okay, that'll bring it to the software. All right. Uh, the next place we'll go is the colors. Uh, what you see right here right now is the um, uh, default colors for all of the outputs, purple for auxiliaries, yellow for subgroups, white for matrices, red for left, right, master, and blue for VCA. Of course, they're user definable, and we change those exactly the same way we change an input one, where we attention it, and then we simply go to the external screen and right click on that channel and choose a new color. If we wanna do it, I'll just choose amber here. All right, so as you can see, we've changed the color of that output now. You can make it anything you want. It's completely user definable, uh, best suited to your scheme, okay? Uh, the next place we'll move to is the fader. <clears throat> uh, as you can imagine uh, on SXL, all of the faders can either be inputs or outputs, so they're gonna share a lot of the same look, feel, and functionality uh, as the input side. The fader is no different, uh, meaning we have the same resolution fader on the output that we have on the input side. Likewise, we have the same nominal light and unity gain light. Uh, same features apply here in terms of resetting that fader. If we have a fader out uh, in position and we just hold down default and touch the fader, it will bring it right back to the nominal position. Of course, we can do that with the attention key and the default key uh, combination as well. Uh, with regard to metering, we have the same metering capabilities on input versus output. Uh, here we have the, you know, the long, tall segments of green, yellow, and red LEDs uh, to give us our channel indication there, our, our signal indication there. Uh, we also have pickoff point capabilities for the outputs now, which is a very important change for S6L. Uh, for instance, if I go to the output section, of course, we have our RMS versus peak ballistics uh, that we can choose globally on the console. Uh, with regard to output metering, uh, it defaults to a top of channel metering position, meaning we will be able to see the level coming into that master bus. Uh, and make sure that we're not overdriving it at the at the earliest point of the bus. But we also have the ability to switch over to post fader and post mute for that output uh, bus as well. I'll start a little signal here so you can get a sense of what's happening here. So now you can see some metering here and I've switched it over to post fader. So you'll be able to see that it is actually following the fader position now. As I turn it up a little bit, you'll see some additional metering. Uh, and likewise, I can just get those back to Unity Game. Uh, they also follows the mute at that position as well. If I mute the channel, no metering there, okay? 
Uh, let's see. The next place we'll go is the XY button. Uh, as you guys may, may or may not remember on uh, the input discussion, the XY button is currently hard-coded to noise gate and compressor uh, insert bypass or engage. Uh, this is for the local onboard uh, gate and compressor. Well, on the output, uh, all of the outputs, we only have the compressor limiter, not the gate or expansion available there. Okay, so only the Y button will be in play there. Next place we'll go is the solo bus. Uh, of course, output solo, you're still going to need to decide whether you, uh, which output bus you want to, or which solo bus you want that output to go to, I should say. Uh, solo bus A, solo bus B, or solo bus A plus B. Mute, of course, is self-explanatory. It's going to cut that output to whatever output it's, it's driving post-fader. Uh, next is your high-resolution OLED. That's going to give you channel description, your own descriptor name for the output. Of course, we have a menu button available here as well, and that will navigate us down through the three-tier menu. We still have the same amount of uh, levels available for input versus output here. Uh, when we press the menu button once, it's going to show us the destination for that output as opposed to the input source for that, that fader. In this situation, it's going to show us where that auxiliary is patched to. Press one more time, and it's going to give us our monitor bus selection, whether it be A, B, uh, or A plus B. Uh, the last selection is the safe mode availability for that output. And uh, in outputs, we have the choice of bank safe or automation safe as opposed to uh, bank automation and solo. All right, so one less option in that output section there. And then, of course, uh, we move into the last button in this fader module, which is the select button. And this, of course, res uh, um, responds to local selection or refers to local selection for this output section. Now, as you can see here in this user-defined layer, I actually have the faders sitting below a knob module here, so it's gonna be very concise on actually what's gonna happen here. So I'm gonna locally select one of the channels here, and as you can see, it brings to life the knob module for that locally selected channel. Now, uh, as we get to this channel, if we have a, a local selection here and we have input selected, it's going to give us the input parameters to that bus, meaning it's going to give us polarity, uh, delay, direct output levels, the pan levels if it's mono. Uh, it also gives us the ability to engage the two safe options for that output. And if that output is assignable to the left, right, of course we can do that here as well. And as you'll note, auxes are available to be assigned directly to the left, right bus. As we move on down, if we choose EQ, we now have the full seven band parametric available to us in either analog or fully parametric mode. Uh, the nice thing about this output selection is we, we also have the ability to scroll to the third octave here if we have one inserted here, which I do on each one of these buses. So I'm going to press on the scroll button right to the right of the EQ selection and notice the third octave now comes up available to us uh, to make adjustments here. We can actually operate that third octave available here. And it, of course, if we have channel chosen in the center screen, we can see both the parametric and the third octave there. So uh, we can actually be in parametric and making changes here. We also have the ability to bring that third octave down to the output or down to the faders if we want to operate that there. And that is done simply by selecting the EQ button in the right hand TFT for the attentioned output. So I'm going to select that and now I'm operating the third octave as you can may be able to see here. We'll get you to the outputs on the big screen here. You can see that I'm operating the third octave. Uh, if I press the third octave button again, it takes me back to that attentioned output. I can reselect it and get to the parametric and make changes there as well. All right. So very easy to get to all the output processing capabilities very simply there. If I press dynamics, of course, I get the compressor limiter that is available for the attentioned and the locally selected uh, output. If I press plugins, I now have the ability to adjust any plugin that is inserted on that output. Uh, if I choose plugins on uh, the large screen, I'll be able to see those plugins in full view and have that follow my selection here. I can get to four plugins per output uh, and have that available to me on the knob module for operation. If we press the mix bus selection, 
for an attention to output, this is going to show us membership of that output. And as you can see right now for this mono auxiliary, I only have two inputs that are assigned to its membership, but this will handle as many as I can, I can assign to it. I can have an entire console's worth of membership and be able to see it on the attention and the locally selected uh, mix bus simply by selecting mix. It'll show me the first one through 32 members. If I choose the next mix, it will shows me, or show me 33 through 64. 65 through 96, and if I have above and beyond 96, the scroll light will be active on that last mix bus, and I can scroll and see the rest of the membership for the given output, okay? Now, the place that departs from this is obviously matrixes. If I select locally select a matrix, now what I have here are all of the matrix sources for that given matrix. This is a mono matrix, so I have on, level, uh, selection for e any one of the sources. If I were to locally select a stereo matrix, I would then have on off level and pan selection for any of the inputs in that matrix as well. All right, so the last thing I'll show you on the locally selected channel is the actual channel selection in channel control. Once we choose channel, what is gonna become available for any locally selected output? And this is going to follow the programming that you do either on the input or the output side. The, the programming in terms of user-defined channel strip here is the same for both input and output currently. Uh, I hope, to, hope that we change that over time. I hope, I'm hoping we get to a point where we can make those two things discrete. But just be aware that if you program in the output section, that programming is going to follow on the input side as well. Meaning maybe I have a, when I select channel, I have some input parameters here. Uh, for this given auxiliary, that would only be the pan. Uh, I have four bands of parametric. I have the, the compressor gate. This is all of the default settings that we have right now. So just keep in mind that programming is common, okay? Last thing I want to bring to your attention on this side is when we have local selection going on here and we have outputs that are sitting in these positions out here underneath knob modules, we can actually do that navigation on the touch screen just exactly like we can do it uh, in inputs. So for instance, if I touch on the equalizer here, it's going to select that channel and bring the equalizer to bear on the, on the knob module. Likewise, if I go up and touch the next channel at the input stage, it's going to bring its input parameters available for that selected channel. And right on down the line, if I touch plugins, I select the channel and get the plugins available for that, just exactly like we do on the input side. Now, uh, that kind of brings us to the point of asking the question, well, what happens then if I have outputs sitting in the center section of the console that doesn't have a knob module above it? How, how do I navigate the processing on that? So let's, let's do that. Let's put the console in that state. I'll just come out of user-defined layouts. Uh, we have a, a dark section of buttons here, which means we're in venue mode, of course, right? So as you can see here, I have a set of outputs, my first eight auxiliaries here, surrounded by inputs. We're in venue mode right now. So if I locally select one of these outputs, how do I get to the processing for it? And of course, uh, the answer is that the selection takes place on the right-hand side of the console. So if I select aux one, notice that the knob module comes to life. Uh, I get the zoomed view of that uh, output here. And of course, I can start navigating all of the channel control for that selected output, that locally selected output. Same thing if I select others, they're just going to come up here. And if I clear the selection out of that, it goes back to its normal state of dealing with the faders that are directly below it. Okay. So very easy, very logical. Once you get your head wrapped around it, that anything I locally select is going to go to the right. It becomes dead obvious what's happening there. Okay. All right, so that uh, wraps up uh, outputs uh, for S6L. Uh, I hope that uh, gets you through all the navigation possibilities and it looks pretty straightforward. Uh, I, I think it's just a wonderful workflow given that it's uh, the, the input uh, navigation and the output navigation are almost identical. You don't, it just, you don't really have to think about it. You're just navigating and processing. It's really, really a great little workflow there. All right, so that's it for outputs. Please come back for more S6L operational videos. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.